Hi guys, so today constraint networks and they can be a little difficult to figure out. So here is my attempt to clearly and visually present that. So let's start with a very simple constraint uh, that is not doing too much, uh, just constraining two objects together. And uh, let's start with the geometries themselves. You can see here I have the sphere and the box and the first thing I would do is to uh, go from a place where they are just, let's see, there's basically nothing on the primitives, there's nothing up my sleeve, uh, but this means that there is no information here uh, about what point and what primitive belong to what piece after we have merged these together. So we need something to um, to contain that information because when we want to constrain things to things and you know, simulate things with things, we want to know what is uh, one piece and what is another piece. And um, Houdini is saving this into attribute, uh, which is very powerful and it can be done in many ways. Uh, nowadays there is lots of uh, tools at a higher level that they have built, but it's still I find it really helpful that you are aware of the basics so we, we can manipulate when you, when you need that. Um, now, <clears throat> one way to do it would be to create this attribute after you have the geometry, uh, before it has um, combined with anything else. So you can just create this uh, string at, uh, attribute here. Another way is to use the connectivity which is <clears throat> creating just that. It's creating an attribute which is having a value for each of these different pieces which are connected um, to themselves. So each of these primitives, each of these polys is going to have the same number with all the other primitives uh, which are in the same <coughs> sorry kind of area which are, which are connected to the same stuff. So, so these guys are going to all be one value and these guys are going to all going to be another value. Now, having this as an integer is not really great because when you have many of these things in a kind of tree-like hierarchy, it would not be um, nice to kind of build this hierarchy of uh, different things. Like if you imagine a tree, you know, it has a trunk, it has branches, then the branches have sub-branches and so on. This is not really co uh, comfy yeah, in an integer. But if you have it in a string, then you can just uh, add, keep adding to the string with some kind of delimiter and you can get a hierarchy. That's why uh, the preferred way to treat these things is with a string attribute. And it's uh, a setup that I have made here which is basically going from, a, uh, from an integer attribute to a string attribute and you can do the same thing with an assemble node um, that's having the um, uh, you see like one thing is piece one, the other thing is p zero. So if it, it, it's it's good to be aware of how it works and then uh, when you most of the time do the like one simple no simple operation. So you know when you go inside it's not as simple. Um, now then you have the, we have the geometry uh, and uh, then we need to build the constraints. So the most important thing about the constraints is to realize what their structure of the geometry is. And the, the, in the soft world, in here, they are geometry. Um, if, if I go to the, to the result of the whole thing, you can see there is a line. And this line is holding information on both the points level and on the primitives level. On the points level, it's holding information about which piece that we just described what the pieces are is the this anchor of the constraint connected to so you know uh, constraint has one anchor on the one side another anchor on the other side and each of these anchors is connected to a piece and it it has a position uh, on the other side in the primitives the constraint has some some data which is defining the properties of the constraint uh, for example the name of the constraint the uh, type these kind of things we're going to talk about later and this is a different geometry from your simulation geometry, from these guys. 
um, in the uh, lately in the Rizvoli tools, you can uh, ca carry them together through the nodes with three inputs, three outputs, but it's important to understand that they are different and separate things. Now, they can be different and still work together because they remember these, I'm um, sorry, they remember these piece attribute here. So the pieces, uh, the, the names here are corresponding to names here. So even these, uh, if these different geometries, uh, the um, solver will be able to make the connection. Now to build this geometry, uh, the connect adjacent pieces is creating just uh, the geometry that you would need. Uh, you could have it configured differently, but eventually this is the kind of thing that it creates. It creates a, um, uh, this primitive, which is configured in the way that we described. Uh, and then this primitive can have attributes added to it, which are defining the properties of the constraint. You can go to the help file, and you can see the different attributes which can be defined, and they uh, carry the properties of the constraint. So eventually, at the end, we have one geometry with the constraints, one geometry with the simulation attributes. One of the properties of the constraint is called the name. Now, this comes into play in the dot network. Um, so here, the name that you have described for the this constant network is uh, going in the data name of the constraint relationship node. So this is basically going to say, look at this, the the polygons with these attributes, to uh, with, with the where the attribute the constraint name attribute is has this value to uh, collect them and create the relationships with, with these. And then the constraint network node is applying these relationships to the rigid bodies which are coming in its inputs and it is using it is it is collecting the uh, is, uh, the data from uh, SOP. In this case, it's a second context geometry, but you can say, uh, what was it, out constraints, like that. OK, so sorry about my icons being broken. So the data, the, the data which has the, uh, sorry, the primitives, which have the constraint name set to that name, and are contained in that SOP are going to be applied to these rigid bodies. And when you play, there you go, we have a constraint. Visualized here with this white line. Now when we have covered this simple case, let's go to a more elaborate one. Uh, now here we have the safety net. Uh, so what it does is that there are four poles on the four sides, uh, and there are the nodes of the net um, inside. These are connected with soft con so with one type of constraint, the soft constraint, the nodes in between themselves, and they're connected to with, with a hard constraint to the poles. Um, none of them is connected, to, obviously, to the following boxes, which is just there to make something interact. So how would we approach that? We have the geometry first. They're just plain, scattering some boxes on it, and then bonding box and scattering other boxes to on the edges to on the corner story to make the poles. Nothing too fancy. Then the connectivity is getting their integer attribute and then it's getting converted to the string. Just like we did before. And until here they are separate. So this allows me to have a different prefix to the name. The same thing you can do with an assemble node with the prefix. And then I run the connect adjacent pieces first on just the boxes. You have a visualizer that for the name which I can turn off. So first I run it with just the boxes. 
and I name that uh, because the uh, yeah this is uh, to putting in the attributes which are containing the uh, properties of the constraint the name and the type is basically what well, how many degrees of freedom it uh, constraints uh, if you set it to all it's going to be both position and rotation if you set it to position or rotation it can be it can be separate uh, so this is this is geomet the geometry which has defined the constraints in between the nodes of the net and then here I'm gonna merge the, the nodes and the poles and I can do again constraint adjacent pieces and I simply do it with a like smaller radius because the here the points of the poles are closer to these guys than than to you know to the next to the next guy. Um, can be done again many ways and uh, I would just went, wanted to go for something which is really uh, simple here to not detract. Um, I set out, up names for the and, and properties for these constraints, which is just these guys, and I can then merge these together and get the all the geometry of the constraints, and you know have it into the output of the constraints. And separately, I can assemble these and um, have the packed geometry created because I need that for the rigid body solver. And here I have then um, output separately just because uh, I opted in the DOM network to have two different RBD packed objects just to kind of say create static objects. And this can also be done with a attribute. But yeah, that's what I went for in here. And in the DOPS, I have two constraint relationships. One of them is called the one thing which I named here. So the ones just between the nodes are called spring and I use that name in the .NET for the soft constraint relationship. And the other ones are named hard and I use that name in the hard relationship. You can merge, merge these two together, then feed them to the constraint network and give it the soft path which has all the constraints. Then, gets, then this gets applied to the rigid boy solver and stuff works. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, let me know if this, if this helps. Hopefully it does and see you next time.